بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continuing on in the dars in Alaqid al-Wasatiyah We're still in the introduction but about to get into the main text Actually we, we began some of the main text where Shaykh al-Islam was speaking about the some of the ayat from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Surah Al-Ikhlas which illustrate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran uses the he uses ifbat wa nafi meaning that he uses affirming affirming that his attributes are divine and that they are perfect free from imperfection and then he uses nafi he negates any naqais, any uh, shortcomings in any imperfections that he's free from imperfections we want to talk a little bit about this comes from uh, Ben Uthaymin's explanation Hafadullah Ta'ala which refers to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's sifat sifat or the attributes of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala the divine attributes of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala we want to talk about the types of attributes Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala possesses for example <coughs> Uh, the attributes or sifat can be divided into sifat dhatiya or sifat fi'liya. Sifat dhatiya meaning those characteristics which are about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self, about himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, those attributes are descriptions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he describes himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we call those sifat dhatiya. Sifat dhatiya are sifat, they further uh, divide into two types, sifat dhatiya khabariya with sifat dhatiya manawiya. So sifat al khabariya, things like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he tells us in the Quran that he has eyes or hands or a face subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're going to bring all the evidence from the Quran first as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah does in Aqidah Tawasatiyah and then from the Sunnah and that his, 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 his uh, Risala is brilliant in fact the way he deal with it that Alam Rabbani that Mina uh, Rabbaniyun subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, have mercy upon him Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bestowed that alam with so much and he uh, through his his writings and his texts we have a lot of clarity about Islam and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and names and he revived the da'wah to Salafiyah the da'wah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah the da'wah of the Salaf al-Salih Ridwan Allahi alayhim so again that here refers to those attributes we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and they're divided into khabariya and ma'nawiya khabariya things like the eyes uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes his hands his face subhanahu wa ta'ala which of course are uh, right up the get go will, uh, will uh, negate as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates for himself when he says subhana laysa kamithlihi shay wa sami'un basir that there is nothing comparable to him. So when we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes, his eyes are not like his creation's eyes, nor his creation's eyes are like his eyes. His hands are not like his creation's hands, nor are his creation's hands like his hands, subhana. His face, subhana, is not like the creation, nor is the creation like his face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those attributes are the attributes, they're thatiya khabariya, and they, def they talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. The second type of thatiya, sifat thatiya, are ma'nawiya. Ma'nawiya, things like hayat, ilm, qudra, and hikmah. Hayat meaning life. Uh, ilm, knowledge. Qudra meaning power. Uh, or quwa, uh, meaning power. And hikmah, like wisdom. Okay, all of these are attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses himself and those attributes are ma'nawiya okay those attributes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as bin Uthaymin mentions these are attributes Allah possesses and continues to possess he possesses these attributes and he continues 
to possess these attributes. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hayyul al qayyum So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the ever-living and the giver of life. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't die as a Christian because all of these attributes, they only have a positive, they only carry a positive meaning. Okay? And they are free from perfection when they des describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we talk about the life of the creation, of course, we live and we die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever living and the giver of life, subhanahu. Elm huwa alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, uh, the all knowledgeable. You know, nothing is. Verily, nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth or the skies. So He has knowledge of all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full qudra and of the huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. He is over all things omnipotent. He is able to, He possesses all the power. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no might and no power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He has full might and power and qudra to, to do as He wills in a manner that fit, suits His majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all wise, the most wise. There's nothing compared, you cannot compare anything in the creation to His wisdom or anything in the creation to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and His divine attributes. These are, these are sifat. They call them sifat ma'nawiya, and they're sifat dhatiya ma'nawiya. So these all are the two different types of that tia which refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala self. That, uh, the khabariya, which are things which we are, we, we, we know from the khabar, from the khabar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning what Allah told us in the Quran, or the khabar of the, of, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the authentic sunnah. That's how we know these sifat. And ma'nawiya, that these are attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses himself, about himself, and they are, so they, they are sifat that describe himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other qism, or the other type of attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses are fi'liya. These are actions related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, and like actions that he subhanahu wa ta'ala does. For, uh, for example, uh, descending or ascending. Okay, uh, de uh, descending as, as the Prophet Sallallahu said in an authentic hadith, Yanzunu Rabbuna Tabarak wa Ta'ala Kulu Thuluth Al-Layl Al-Akhir. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. That's a characteristic of Allah, that He descends in a manner that suits His majesty. With, and the kayfiyah, the how, we don't know, we're unaware of. Also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa, Allah rose above His throne. These are also sifat fi'liyah. These have to do with actions that He does and actions related to His will. Because He does it however and whenever He does and uh, he subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing of his own attributes. He knows himself better than anything or anyone else, subhanahu. And also being pleased, a rida. This is also one of the fi'liyah. This is an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, that he is pleased with his servants. He's pleased, uh, radiallahu anhum wa radu an. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those, uh, the muhajireen wa ansar, and pleased with the muttaqeen, and pleased with those people who, uh, ahl jannah. Okay, all of these, this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the attribute of being pleased, of pleasure, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How his pleasure is, we don't know. We only we know the meaning of pleasure. We know that Allah possesses it, and we know in accordance with the nasus of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. So that's just to give us an idea, a basic breakdown of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa taala. That we have that tia which describe Himself, and there are things like khabariya and ma'nawiya, meaning eyes, hands, face. Those are sifat khabariya, wa ma'nawiya things like hayat, uh, ilm, 
Qudra, Hikmah, those are all divine attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses in a manner that suits His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then His fi'liya, His sifat, fi'liya, actions related to His will, that He descends however He pleases, whenever He pleases. Uh, and we know from the khabar of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who does not lie. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest uh, heaven every last third of the night. Khalas, we know that. Also, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those who he describes he is pleased with in the Quran. And things like possessing love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah yuhibbu sabirin, inna Allah yuhibbu muttaqeen. Allah loves the, those pious ones. Allah loves those who are patient. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. A last principle Sheikh bin Uthaymeen mentioned here is the, the, the intellect has no place in determining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. And we affirm and negate from the text, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So the intellect, meaning our intellect, this is the distinction between the minhaj or the methodology of Ahl Sunnah with these affairs and the methodology of groups like the Ashaira, the Matiridiya, and others who make ta'wil of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the various Mu'attala and other groups who uh, either have ta'til or tashbi or fall into uh, ta'wil um, and, and so forth. All of these ways of distorting the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or negating these attributes that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala possesses. Ahl sunnah affirms as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about himself and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirms about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates about himself azza wa jal and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negates about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is Ahl Sunnah's minhaj that we go to the nasus, we go to the text, and we don't, and we accept the text as they are. We don't say, well, we need to change it to fit our intellect. My intellect is like this. Susie's intellect is like this. Mike's intellect is like this. Muhammad's intellect is like this. Fatima's intellect is like this. <clears throat> All of our intellects differ. You know, we all have a different way of thinking, a different understanding. So our intellect is not even the same. So if we were to use our intellect to make these judgments, we would all have a different picture of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And all have a different picture of what it takes to go to Jannah and so forth. And this is where the, those deviant sects, especially of now time, uh, these days and age, the secularists and other ones, that they use their intellect in totality. But their asl, it comes from philosophy, it comes from those alien ideologies that came into Islam. And this is what affected those in, uh, uh, original groups like the Jahamiya, the Mu'tazila, the Karamiya, the, uh, and then later the Ashaira, and later the, uh, and also at the same time, or possibly even before, is the Maturidiya. So all of these these groups and sects, they all have one thing in common in their methodology or medhev, is that they use their intellect is the thing that makes the judgment for them. Yatahakum sifatillah bi akulihim. Yani the intellect, their their aql, their intellect is what they use to make their judgments. They judge ahla bid'ah, ahla. Bida judges with intellect. That's imperative for us to understand. You might not know all the details with all those various groups, but what we need to know mainly about them is that they use their intellect to make their judgments related to the religion in general, but especially about the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in the Bab sifat This is where you have those early groups and sects that went astray, aside from the, uh, those before them, like the Khawarij who made takfir for the major sinners, uh, and the, uh, the, the Shia, the various Shia groups as they evolved, and then, of course, 
the Qadariya, and so forth. Those groups also share aspects of this, but it really became uh, big issues with groups like the Jahmiya and then the Mu'tazila, and then those after them. That's where that bid'ah really became, and the aql, and that using, it came from philosophy, you know, Greek philosophy, because the Arabs, the Arabs, they began to translate the text of the philosophers and restore that text for the uh, for the Greeks and, and so for the Western civilization. And from that, from that, a lot of those ideologies, those people translating and stuff, they were becoming in, uh, affected by those ideologies, those things they were translating, they were affected and found benefit to them in Plato and Socrates and others and their ideologies. And this, they began to form, try to Islamicize those philosophies and ideologies. And that's where they began to deviate with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.